Woman buys Boeing 727 plane and converts it into an amazing home. After a fire had destroyed her previous home, this woman decided to take matters into her own hands. The result will amaze you. Joanne A hot tub in the cockpit, a fully equipped kitchen and three bedrooms. Welcome aboard the fabulous Boeing 727 that has been converted into a luxury home. How did it all begin? And can you really live in a plane? You'll discover it now. House hunting is dreadful, and for many, it's an even more daunting experience than looking for a new job. The inflation has caused the price of many homes to skyrocket, and especially in the big cities. The demand for housing is so high that competition is fierce. As a result, more and more people have to take desperate measures to have a roof over their heads. If only there were another solution. A cheap little house that we can renovate and transform into a cozy home, for example. Well, that is precisely what Joanne did. But instead of an ordinary house, she bought a real plane. This is her story. Joanne Ussery is from Mississippi in the south of the United States. She had worked as a hairdresser all her life and had always been a very cheerful woman. But then tragedy struck. In 1993, a fire destroyed her entire house. Joanne became homeless overnight. She didn't want to go house hunting. She didn't want to live in a flat anymore. And her original plan was to construct a simple mobile home next to a quiet riverbank in the woods. But after years of searching, she still hadn't found anything. Then her brother-in-law Bob Farrow, an air traffic controller, suggested her to invest in an unconventional home, namely a gigantic Boeing 727. The 727 with the registration number N88701 made its first flight on May 11, 1968 and was still in operation until September 20, 1993. Joanne paid 1,635 euros for the plane and another 3,250 euros for a removal firm to move it to her land plot by the water. At first, her friends thought she had gone mad, but they changed their minds when they saw what a good job she had done renovating the plane's interior. Joanne did practically all the work herself and in no time, the plane was ready to use. It had hot running water and electricity. And she also added three bedrooms, a living room, a fully equipped kitchen that even has a dishwasher, a laundry room and a large and a small bathroom to the home. There are also luxury items, including a jacuzzi in the cockpit that overlooks the lake below. Although the plane has gone through a significant renovation, Joanne didn't get rid of all the original parts. She kept the fold-down chairs, for example, as well as the four emergency exits. These are in the living room and can now be opened to let a little breeze in. How clever! Because the plane no longer had wings when she purchased it, Joanne used the extra space to add a generously sized patio and carport. And if it's a view you're after, well, Joanne has thought of that too. A huge deck overlooking a beautiful lake is accessible via a spiral staircase. And although the plane rests on the ground, it creates the illusion that it's still flying because its nose sticks out over the lake. Besides the uniqueness, the house has other advantages. For example, it never needs to be repainted, and termites will never be a problem either. Joanne nicknamed her dream home the Little Trump, a reference to Donald Trump's business jet, also a Boeing 727. When the renovation was completed, 51-year-old Joanne said, the plane is 27 years old and it is the best house in the world. It has everything you need, a telephone, air conditioning, an oven, a washing machine, and even a dishwasher. It is always pleasantly warm, even in winter. And it's also enormous, 42 meters long. My grandchildren love to run around in it, and my friends love the parties I organize here. She also added that next time she would prefer a Boeing 747 instead of a 727. A Boeing 747 has two floors, and she thinks it would be more convenient to go upstairs to sleep. The house has been featured in numerous magazines and television shows, including the Today Show and the David Letterman Show. It also received the title of one of the 20 most bizarre houses in the world. Unfortunately, the extraordinary house sustained severe damage in May 1999 when it was moved a mile and a half. Joanne wanted it to be moved so that the people could come and admire it, but that didn't work out so well, unfortunately. As a result, Joanne no longer lives in the house. 
several videos appeared on the internet saying that Joanne was poor and only had 4,000 euros to buy and renovate the plane. However, a quick calculation shows that this is incorrect. The plane itself cost 1,635 euros and she paid 3,250 euros for the relocation. Together, that is 4,885 euros, already 885 euros above her budget. And that's not all. The renovation costs were also substantial. She spent no less than 20,352 euros. So it's not true that she was poor and desperate, but that doesn't make this story any less impressive, because what she has done with the plane is special. I'm quite impressed, and I bet I'm not the only one, because others have decided to live in a plane. I present to you Bruce Campbell. Just like Joanne, he bought an old Boeing 727 and converted it into a home. The big difference? Well, Bruce paid a whopping $100,000, or about 82,000 euros, for this plane. But he's certainly happy with it. Compared to Joanne's plane, it is a little less luxurious, but he doesn't mind. With a habitable space of almost 100 square meters and a location that speaks volumes, this is a boy's dream come true. A folding staircase leads you to the house's front door, where Bruce awaits you with joy. Living here is a constant adventure, says the retired engineer about his home. He bought the rejected plane in 1999 and has lived in it for more than two decades now. In addition to the plane's cost, he spent another 100,000 euros on transport, maintenance, and renovation. He replaced the original floor with transparent tiles to see the plane's construction and wiring. The plane is parked in a clearing in a forest in Oregon, USA. You could shoot a scene there for the TV series Stranger Things. Bruce doesn't understand why people think it's crazy that he lives in a plane. Jets are flying houses, he says. The cockpit is a cozy place to read a book. The wings form a pleasant terrace, and he uses the space underneath as a covered veranda. He has often given tours to curious people and camera crews. Then he shows off his sofa bed, the primitive shower, the storage space, and his work table with drawers and piles of pencils. There is no jacuzzi in this Boeing, though. The plane is made of good quality materials, and in comparison to an ordinary house, Bruce only sees advantages. It has a beautiful design. It's high-tech and very safe because it's fireproof and can withstand gusts of wind and other types of bad weather. The aviation enthusiast is so pleased with his home that he intends to convert a second plane into a home. This time, he would like to do it in Japan, a country he often visits. It certainly provides a great contrast with the current tiny house movement. This trend states that bigger isn't necessarily better. In fact, the smaller the better seems to be the motto. People who follow this trend are no longer satisfied with too much, too big, and too complicated. They know that all this extravagance doesn't make people happy, and that it even leads to the opposite for many people, stress and debt. The tiny house movement is a hype that originated in the United States, and a growing number of people are participating. Not so strange, because such a tiny house has so many advantages. For example, it's much cheaper, and the money saved by living in such a small house gives you more freedom to chase your dreams. This gives residents a sense of control over their own lives and happiness. Often, tiny houses are also mobile, which means that they can easily be parked or assembled in several places. This freedom, both financially and geographically, is the biggest reason why most people construct such a house. The same goes for Jenna, who became world famous for her beautiful tiny house, where she lived happily for several years. She originally built a house with her boyfriend Guillaume. This was actually more out of necessity. Studying is very expensive in the United States, and she had high debts to repay. Rent is also quite expensive. She therefore worked many hours a day to afford all this. Both she and her partner were eager to have more free time to focus on their hobbies. Jenna loved writing, for example, and Guillaume loved photography. They also enjoyed traveling, but it looked like they wouldn't have time for it at all. In 2013, she suddenly had a great idea. The result was this beautiful tiny house. They didn't need to pay rent anymore, and the house is on wheels so they can move it easily. And so, Jenna and Guillaume traveled a lot together. They also had an online travel blog. She wrote, he took photographs, and that's how they became world famous. Meanwhile, Jenna and Guillaume have split up, and Jenna no longer lives in the house. She still loves the place, and even after the breakup, she continued to live in the tiny house for several years. 
but after she met her new husband, this was unfortunately no longer an option. He was just a bit too tall for her house. Would you consider living in such a tiny house? To be honest, it's a nightmare for people with claustrophobia. There isn't much room to walk around, and you certainly won't have a jacuzzi. Did these homes impress you? Or maybe you know a unique house that you would like to share with us? Let us know in the comments. I'd love to see you tomorrow for the next video.